That's what I like, a nature documentary that has a gunboat. <laughs> That's what I like. The man who made it is right here, Rob Stewart. How are you? Good, thank you. Thank you. You know, well, thank you. You've, uh, you've had quite a response to this shark water film, man. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been crazy, actually. But didn't it, it just start off as like a guerrilla project for you that just went... It did, absolutely. When, when I started making this movie, it was five years ago, and I thought I was going to make you know, a beautiful underwater movie. There was going to be no people in it. And then three weeks into shooting the film, we ended up you know, charged with attempted murder and running from Costa Rica with machine guns chasing us and mafia rings after us. And the movie took a very different turn because we had to uh, you know, start filming ourselves in case we ended up stuck in a Costa Rican prison for the rest of our lives. Right. So there ended up you know, being people. How much about sharks did you know before you walked into this? Quite a bit. I was a I was a fish nerd when I was a kid, so you know sh sharks were sharks were my thing. It really played well with the girls and the guys, didn't it? Being a fish nerd, <laughs> oh yeah, got you lots of dates. I was the coolest. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so I loved fish. I loved predators, snakes, and sharks were sort of like you know the last dragons we have on the planet. Yeah. You know the last dinosaurs, and I, I knew just about everything there was to know about them. How old were you when you first met a shark? Uh, about nine. What was it like? It was amazing. It was absolutely amazing because. You know, as a kid, you're afraid of things. You're afraid of the dark. You're afraid of the water. You're afraid of, you know, boogeymen in your closet. And then, but people tell you your whole life to be afraid of sharks. And then finally, you know, you meet one underwater, and it's a really crazy, you know, whole paradigm-shifting experience because the thing that you've been taught your whole life to be afraid of is just amazing and beautiful. So and doesn't want to. Hurt you're you. there underwater, and the shark comes up. What are you thinking? Well, as a kid, you're just like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, you know? <laughs> because, you know, you want to meet these things as a kid. You know, if there was a dinosaur, even if it was, you know, a raptor, something that's going to rip me to shreds, I would have probably wanted to meet it as a kid. Is, is that you petting a shark right there, by the mm -hmm. way? That's a pretty shark. <laughs> that shark, by the way, doesn't look like it's consenting. Aren't they cute? They're beautiful, man. What kind of shark is that? That's a Caribbean reef shark. Okay, now most people will look at that and just freak right out, but they don't realize you can actually deal with a shark. Yeah, people, people are so involved with the fear. You know, pretty well everything we've been receiving from the media, from just about everybody, is that sharks are dangerous and they're going to kill you and they're going to eat you. But the reality is totally different. You know, they've been here for actually 400 million years, mm -hmm. right? 100 million years before the dinosaurs, and they're designed to eat things that live in the ocean. They really don't want a whole lot to do with people. And even when they do make a mistake and bite somebody, they let go. And that's why everybody ends up... You know, back on shore with a bite marker. You see, I'm not one of those dudes who thinks that sharks attack us for no reason. I don't think we should be out there. I think if you're out there and a shark hits you, that, that shark didn't make a mistake. It was just defending his turf. Get the hell off my land. Well, we don't, you know, we say in the movie, you don't, you don't go for a run next to a pride alliance and expect to end up okay. Right. You know? <laughs> but every day we're in the ocean in areas where sharks hunt and so few people are bitten. And that's a testament to shark sensory systems, how accurate they are to, at being able to t tell, you know, we're not a seal or we're not a group of fish, that kind of thing. You know what I find really interesting about your film uh, is, is the way you related a couple of, of pieces of information. People know that they fish for sharks. They know that there is sharks fin soup. They know all about that stuff. Mm -hmm. But, and I know it sounds so boring when I say at home, hey, we're going to talk about long line fishing. But the impact of something as simple as long line fishing, that if people maybe understood it a little better, they might have a different reaction. Yeah, it's, it's something that is unprecedented on the planet. I mean, it's a long line fishing line could be 80 miles long, 16, 40,000 baited hooks, you know, catching just about everything. It catches sharks and tunas and seabirds and sea lions and sea turtles. So it would be the same sort of thing of, you know, walking into the forest and laying down a trap line that catches just about everything, it catches moose and wolves and foxes and squirrels. Nobody would stand for it if it happened on land, but the fact that it's happening in the oceans, you know, is just a testament to the fact that, you know, what's out of sight is out of mind. And when you started making this film, did you, get, did you realize that you were going to sort of get behind this conservation machine now? Because that's what's starting to happen. Your film, over time, mm. it started off just, just talking about sharks, but as the film evolved, it became very much an activist film about saving sharks. Yeah, it, it evolved greatly. Well, when I started out, I wanted to bring people closer to sharks than they've ever been before so that, you know, they could actually see an interaction with sharks they've never seen before and truly understand them. Because we're so far, you know, in virtually all of television and media, we're, you know, taking the perspective of the prey, you know, and sharks are chasing us and, you know, look, shark how, attack. look how brave these people are for filming sharks. But every time you see, a, you know, a cage on TV, there's somebody outside the cage filming the cage. Yeah, that's right. You know? And they're fine. Yeah, and they're fine. So um, I wanted to bring people closer, and that was how I thought people could fight for their protection. <laughs> because, you know, an elephant falls for ivory in Africa and the world goes crazy. Elephants kill 200 people a year. Sharks kill five people a year. We kill 100 million of them and nobody notices. You brought up the mafia angle. 
yeah. which is really interesting when it comes to the trade of sharks. But that's, yeah. there's a mafia involved. There is, yeah. There's the thing that people don't realize is there's so much money in the trade of animals. There's so much money in the trade of fins. It's a, you know a billion dollar industry. So there's you know multi millionaires playing mafia rings like puppeteers trying to uh, trying to exploit the resource. And we ended up exposing a connection between the Taiwanese mafia in Costa Rica and the government, which was why we were being arrested. And as soon as we exposed that, they actually came after us and were going to detain us indefinitely until they figured out what they wanted to do with us. And we had to wrap barbed wire around our boat and run from Costa Rican waters while they were, you know, firing machine guns next to us. And it's good fun, man. It's a good movie. <laughs> and, and all this from a movie that I thought was going to be about fish. Right. You know? Well, th and this is the thing, you know, uh, for, there'll be people who are watching at home and they'll go, oh, that's really interesting, and then and they'll carry on with their lives. But there may be somebody who go, well, okay, what do you do then? Like, what comes next? What, you've made this film, you've, you've won some awards, you've, you've toured the picture, but what do you do with this story now for a guy like you who put so much into it? Yeah, um, well, the movie, you know, it took me five years. It nearly killed me a half dozen times. You got and flesh eating disease too, didn't you? I got flesh eating disease, I got dengue fever, West Nile virus, and tuberculosis at the same time. So the flesh eating disease was nothing. That was, you know, <laughs> that was a cakewalk compared well, let, to dengue. And let me guess, man, no insurance on this film for you, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> None of that. <laughs> but um, so the movie was really difficult, and sort of my experience of making films is that you've got to be incredibly passionate about them. Because if I, you know, if this was a movie on you know, canaries or finches, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been able to finish it. Right. But um, just because I love sharks and I think the story was really important. So I think um, the main crux of my movement for the next almost year is going to be getting the movie out there. People need to see this film because you don't, you know, no one sits down to a buffet of tiger meat. Mm -hmm. You just don't do that. There's an awareness out there about what's going on with tigers. They're almost gone. So well, this is about selling conservation to kids then, isn't it? And, and young adults and, 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 and people who, who are older who have the ability to make decisions with their money. Yeah, but bringing awareness. People don't know that sharks are being wiped out, and they don't know that their populations are down an estimated 90% because of it. And if they don't know that, they're definitely not going to know that sharks have a really important role in ecosystems. And then if we remove sharks, it's going to mean big problems for you know, human life. On top Earth. of the food chain on the, the hugest part of the, of the globe, which is all the water. Top of the food chain, and they've been there since the beginning. You know, 100 million years before the dinosaurs. So imagine a fish tank that you put a bunch of piranhas in. Yeah. Any new animal you put into that fish tank has to have a way of getting away from the piranhas. Right. Just like sharks in the ocean, any new animal over the last 400 million years has to be able to get away from sharks. So, so much of the ocean is shaped by sharks. Wow. That's amazing. Good to see you, man. Thanks for coming in. Thanks. All right.